Hello and good morning everyone out there on LinkedIn. I've taken a little break from creating videos to allow my imagination to run wild and come up with new ideas. And this morning I wanted to review the new XR1, uh, which is the accessory add-on mixed reality XR for the Vario VR1, which is currently priced at $7,000, mainly for enterprise clients. Now we've had this argument for years now, whether or not diffractive, reflective, or non-reflective uh, waveguide opt optics like in the Magic Leap or the HoloLens, and various other products uh, is going to take off versus stereo pass-through. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for the past year, I've been maintaining that stereo pass-through is the technology that's going to bridge the gap and allow more consumers to jump in here and try out this technology. Now, this XR1 is incredible, um, you know, versus what we currently have offered in the market. And, and mainly what they were, you know, comparing uh, many of the issues they had, number one, was latency. So they had, you know, in the past, we had 60 to 100 milliseconds of latency, um, which really created a lot of issues for this. Uh, but now they, they've actually improved it to sub 15 milliseconds. So this opens up all types of different sectors and applications that they can utilize. And let me show you one while someone's driving in Volvo. So let's go ahead and X out this right here on the Vario, and then we'll do the, the while driving so you can see this Volvo and BMW and various other companies right now are testing design, integration, troubleshooting, um, and, and maybe even in sales as well, which is obviously probably the biggest uh, you know, focus for them. But having consumers try this out in real time while they're driving, you can see this less than 15, seconds of, uh, 15 milliseconds of latency is just phenomenal. It's an, an unbelievable advancement. Um, and I can't uh, wait to try it. But also on the, 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 the resolution of the display itself. Uh, you know, right now <laughs> we're four or five minute, uh, you know, sub uh, arc minute resolution. And we've been focused on trying to get human eye uh, resolution. 2020, you know, um, uh, which is 60 pixels per degree. I think the new HoloLens 2 has stated they're at 47 pixels per degree in non-moving environments. But this also offers uh, that 60 pixels per degree at 3,000 pixels per inch, a flicker free at, at up to 90 hertz refresh rate. And it has two different displays, right? So that, that bionic display is in the middle and that's around 1920 by 1080, very low persistence micro LED, which is then on top of a Vive Pro type peripheral at 1440 by 1600. Again, an AMOLED screen. So you have these two bionic displays kind of blended together. And, and what you actually see, just how your eye views the world is very high resolution in certain places, which is mainly right now in the XR1, as I understand it, only in the middle, but in the, in the future they'll use foveated rendering. So depending on where you look, you'll see that ultra photorealistic environment. But let's also talk about the depth map. So they're not only using binocular disparity and stereo to calculate depth around it, but they're using active infrared sensors um, I, I think they're, they're two ultra-wide angle cameras um, and structured light and, and LEDs. So this allows, a, 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 I'd say, a higher resolution uh, depth map to be synchronized with the video pass-through and provide very, very low uh, latency and, and a, a very, an incredibly high resolution and robust depth map. So let's also take a look at something else that's very interesting to me, which is the optical pass-through system. So let's... Uh, See if I can get this up and running. There we go, perfect. So this combination here is what you're seeing is the, the uh, a, a diffractive waveguide optic technology as, as well as the, compared versus the XR1. So you can see that very ghost-like image that we've all become accustomed to and that, that many of the manufacturers of these products don't really want to address or discuss openly. But this is the issue and you can see in this particular image or video that it's very overcast outside. You know, the, the, even the concrete's kind of gray, so you can still see that kind of ghost-like image out there. But with stereo pass-through, it's not impacted, and you can actually overlay very high-resolution imagery and, and um, visualizations in ambient lighting conditions where you would not be able to in diffractive waveguide optics. That's pretty incredible to me. Um, and I also wanted to show you one more thing here, uh, one, more, one last video, um, which essentially shows this while you're, um, there we go. Is it the VR one? Let's try this one. There we go. So this one right here, I wanted to show you because this is my 
kind of visualization of the world. I'm not the only one that shares this mentality, but imagine being in your office, and, and this is the augmented reality view. So Timothy at, at Unity was discussing the convergence of virtual reality and augmented reality as XR, or spatial computing as we call it now. We're always finding these new terminology, uh, you know, key, key phrases. But what you can see here is that ultra resolution, and all of a sudden you jump right into virtual reality. So there's many different concepts of this in the future where you'll have a visor that you'll flip down and jump into virtual reality. But with this particular product, you don't even need that, as you can clearly see here. Somebody's designing and viewing either a, a sales product in their home or in their office, and all of a sudden they press a button and they're in Italy, and they can potentially simulate this product in real time, but actually feel like they're there. That's incredible. So I also, I believe Vario is show, showcasing this technology at AWE this week, unfortunately, I will be unable to attend. I know many other enthusiasts and masters will be there, so I can't wait to see some of your videos. But if you do get a chance to test this out in real time, please create a video and send it to me. I'm always very anxious to see some of this information. I will be unable to attend, as I stated, um, but I look forward to seeing this. And, you know, reach out to me and let me know if this is something you're interested in as a cost comparison, right? Because right now, if you use the new HPZ that's coming out this summer, They've integrated a new 2080 NVIDIA GPU, which will power this device. So all together, said and done, it'd be around a $10,000 solution, maybe versus the HoloLens 2.0 at four or 5,000. But again, the limitations, there's so many limitations that you overcome and advantages with stereo pass-through uh, that I believe is just, it's, it's worth that, especially for enterprise clients that are designing applications where they don't want to have to deal with diffractive wave guns. They don't want to have to ask the question, how bright is it outside? Because my Magic Leap 1 is only outputting 210 nits. The HoloLens 2.0 is only outputting 500 nits. There's various other products that go up to 1,200 nits. Even Loomis goes up to six or 7,000, which is where we should be in various products. I believe Lenovo came out with an A6 type of a, a, a competitor, a mixed reality competitor. There's various others now that are just flooding the market. I can't wait. This next year is going to be insane with how many different manufacturers are going to be releasing new products. But the XR1 is what I personally have been waiting for and I can't wait to test it. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, it's, it's very imperative for our industry as a whole to, to be open and transparent and to share your ideas so people feel empowered with uh, information and then they can empower others. And, and move that forward. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I look forward to hearing back from you soon.